In this video, we are going to go ahead and wrap up what we've done already. I've actually just tried to open the same project open twice, which caused a small issue. So let's go ahead and ignore that. It's been a fun day. So we've started from a blank project, and that's important. We didn't use anything, no external models, no external software. We did everything in Engine, and we got a pretty decent little game. I mean, we have some interactivity with our con We learned our controllers. We learned how to set our controllers up. We have a generic little gun modeled, which apparently I have sideways. At, there we go. Sideways at this point. We can fire. We can start and quit. We have a little bit of interactivity with our environment. We have scores showing. We have some randomness going on with what we can shoot and hit. And we have a pretty decent little basic game. And it was all done from scratch. And it was a decent little introduction to how the Vive and VR in general works with Unreal Engine. So as I go through some of this stuff, I'll see about tossing out some ideas on things that could be worked on, things that could be improved on, maybe some future videos that I'd like to do. Off the top of my head, this only uses fixed positioning. If, for example, you were using the Rift and you're using the Oculus Touch, you could move around in your area with your head mounted device and you could fire using your Oculus Touches. But you can't really move around anywhere inside of our grid. If you're using the Vive, like I was using, you can actually walk around in your chaperoned area, but you can't leave it. I hope to be able to add in a future video. We'll do some basic teleportation or locomotion so that way you can move around your play area and give you a nice little sense of space. We'll also add in for the ability for random enemies to fire back at you so that we actually have something you have to dodge. Now, things that could be worked on and things that could be changed. We covered some basics for profiling the GPU. That's kind of important. You have some heavy requirements when you're trying to push a VR display. You have two high definition screens most of the time that need to be powered. And there's only so much that Unreal Engine can do. Having the instant stereo on is a great thing. Basically, it's only for your higher end machines, like it says here, Direct 3D Shader Mark 5 or PS4. So your DirectX 11 and 12 machines, I think DirectX 11, I'm pretty sure DirectX 11 and 12 machines, and your PlayStation 4. And it's, only, it's obviously for, only for the PS4 because the Xbox One doesn't have VR support right now. But it's meant to basically only render everything in one eye and then it duplicates it with an offset in the other eye and it gives you better performance. Sometimes you might have an issue so you can play around with it. There's a bunch of other options in here. Your default processing settings, like you saw, ambient inclusion takes a ton out of your system. So you might want to disable these to get better performance. Auto exposure, motion blur causes issues with motion sickness. You might want to keep it off. Lens flares take processing power. And auto exposure probably isn't that big of a deal. I shut it off though because we're in a static room. It probably looks pretty cool, if especially if you're outdoors and indoors using the VR because just like in real life, your eyes are going to adjust and they'll adjust inside your HMD device and it'll be a pretty cool effect. Using the post-processing volume to go ahead and shut off things globally. Like I went ahead and shut off the screen space reflection to give me more performance. And I changed my AA method to FXAA, which I could have done in here, but I went ahead and did in here because these are easier to play with. And of course you can change all your other settings to give you more performance. Let's see. Performance being the big thing and user interface. So keep in mind everything done in this is just one way of doing it. VR is a new user experience, not technically not new, but it's it's much more mainstream now, and it's a new experience for everyone, and developers are learning best practices. You'll find games that use things like laser wands shooting out the end of your controller in order for you to easily identify things, or like in our case, we just simply used an invisible line trace, and we shot at our target. Now we use 3D widgets to give us a sort of an interface. We use things such as um, 
the collision boxes on our menu in order to know what we hit. And you have a bunch of different ways of doing things. You have, I mean, like for example, if I was to take my player, this is something new that was added, and I was to go to my viewport, let's say on our camera, we add a widget. Yeah, let's try this again with the widget. Right onto our camera, and then maybe we took our widget and spaced it out a little bit. Let's make our widget the score widget for no good reason at all. And let's rotate, which of course is going to be a pain in the butt. There we go. And we'll rotate our score 180 degrees. And let's shrinky dink that down, shall we? And let's hit play. You're actually going to see over off from the right our score, so let's move this over a little bit. Yeah, see how it's off to the right? Let's move our widget over this way and maybe down a little bit. Let's see what happens here. There we go. So we have our player score at the bottom of the screen. Let's move it down again and move it over one more. Now you'll notice when we have a normal player screen at the top, player score. Now when I move my head mounted device though, we actually have the player score locked on to our head mounted device. Now it does have some issues. Depending on the speed you move, it may not move appropriately. You can see it kind of jumping. It just depends on your settings and things like that. But this is a way that you can actually do another form of interface. But again, it's subjective. It's based on your game and it's something that is extremely experimental right now in terms of figuring out what will work. It's all based on the type of game. So it's something to think about. For my level, I used emissive lights with a completely dark room. I'm just simply using the emissive so we can see our level. Obviously, when we're out here, we can't see anything. For performance reasons, something that you could have done to give you more performance is all of my materials. So let's change our materials and let's put these into our base color instead of a sieve. If we were to take these, and keep in mind, I did a missive to make it easier on the tutorial and to easily show you some things that could happen. So, unfortunately, I have to wait for this thing to compile. Let's compile. Let's take our last wall material and change this one over to base color and compile. And you'll notice, obviously, we have a small bit of an issue because we're not going to be able to see anything. And we're not going to be able to see anything because we have no lights. These things are set up as emissive because, well, they're emissive. When you're doing a VR or mobile, for the most part, you want to use static lighting. You want to go ahead and avoid things such as dynamic lighting or even stationary lighting for the most part. You're going to get better performance with static light maps. I went ahead and built this, and as you can see, if we were to play right now, we couldn't see anything. The funny part, though, is, and it actually might be pretty cool, because the particles are emissive and our targets are emissive, you actually get these little red spheres and you actually do get a little bit of an effect and you can see where you hit. So you can think about that. But what I was trying to get at here is if I go back to unlit, we slap a few lights in here. For example, you could put a point light in here. Let's turn this back on the lit mode. There we go. We'll do a little point light. Um, you know what? Obviously, I'm not setting this up very well, but you could do something like that, that, and then we can duplicate these over in that direction, like that. We can take our point lights, make sure they are set at static. Go ahead and build. And because we're using static lighting, there is zero cost for these lights when we're actually playing. They're all built in basically the texture. And you can see our game itself looks a little bit different. We can still see everything, which is nice. We still get our green glowing effect on the floor because we're changing the material. But we get a little bit better performance because we're not using emissive lights. And we... That, well, basically that's it. You get better performance because you're not using emissive lights and you're using static lighting for everything. So that's another small quick tip.
other than that, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much. I'm pretty sure that's gonna wrap everything up. Let me look through and check things out. Transparency. Transparency in our particle does affect. Transparency itself is going to affect your performance on mobile and on VR, so keep that to a minimum. Obviously, obvi I am mentioning VR like it's this evil thing that needs a ton of optimization to make work, but it doesn't. You just need to keep in mind it's basically like you're designing a game for a 4K display. You're you're designing it to be played on high resolution because you have your two high resolution screens, which basically means more processing power out of your computer and your video card. So while you may think, oh, this game should run fine on my minimum spec VR, it doesn't look very performance intensive. When it has to render it out to the VR device, it's going to take more than it looks like on your computer itself. So keep that in mind. That's why most people aim for like mobile specs and things like that and cut off things they don't need. In terms of VR itself, if you notice through this entire thing, at no point did I take control of the player. The head mounted device controlled looking. The controllers controlled the mesh itself for aiming and firing. I didn't stop the player from looking around. I didn't move the player without their permission. I didn't move them at all. Motion sickness is a very real thing, and it's usually caused when your player no longer has control of themselves and their brain has an issue with it. So don't use matinees where you take the view away from the player. Don't stop the player from moving their head. That's the biggest thing. Don't just stop the movement because they're going to try to move. Nothing's going to move and their head's not going to understand why. Don't move them locomotion wise without their consent. Don't have, for example, your character move from point A to point B without them themselves initiating it. They're going to have issues. There's work on doing things like walking, locomotion. Teleport is your usual thing where you aim and click. Because it's instantaneous, your brain understands and can work better. This is going to go ahead and it's going to wrap up this series. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know.